Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to talk about multi-table update queries. We're going to use an update query with values from another table to retroactively normalize a field. What does that mean? I'll explain it in just a second. Today's question comes from Louis from Arlington, Virginia, one of my gold members. Louis says, I've got my state and country fields as text like you show in your videos. However, my users are entering values any which way. I've got US, USA, U period, S period, U period, S period, A period, United States, and others. How can I limit them to just one value? Well, Louis, this brings up a topic called database normalization. Now, I spent a lot of time covering this in my Access Expert Level 2 class, along with a bunch of other stuff like referential integrity. But normalization basically says you don't want to have data in your database in any table that repeats itself. There's a lot of other aspects to normalization, but that's the big one. Take a look at this customer table, for example. We've got the country field here, right? But we've got US, 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 that's repeating data. But then someone down here types in USA and then US. Okay, and that's not good. If I want to generate a query or a report showing all my customers from a particular country, now I got to deal with misspellings. The same problem can happen with state too. The way that you fix the problem is to properly normalize the table. You use a country ID. Then you create a second table, a country table. Here I've got a country query, but it's the same thing, right? And you link it by country ID. And you can see in your tables now with the country ID, the user picks from a combo box, right? So this gets saved as a one for the country, and that translates to United States. See how that works? That's properly normalizing that table for the country field. And now to pick the country, the user can just pick from a combo box, right? Like Canada. There you go. Now I'm going to show you how to put that little world flag in there in a few minutes too. But the problem is right now we've got all of this data in our table. So how do we take this and fix it and normalize it so we don't have to re-enter all this information? And more importantly, why do I show you how to do it this way first? Well, this is easier for new users to comprehend. When you're starting off building a database, it's difficult to teach people an advanced concept like relationships and normalizing and all that stuff when they're still learning how to build tables. Okay? So that's why in my intro and my beginner classes, I tell them just to type in the country, and then we'll fix it later. It's not that hard to fix. You're going to see in just a second here. Remember, you got to learn how to walk before you can learn how to fly. All right, we're going to be flying pretty soon with our database, but right now we're still in the jogging stage. Now, before we continue, three prerequisites. Relationships. you got to know relationships. Go watch my relationship video if you don't know how to relate two tables together. Update queries. I have an earlier update query video that shows you how to just update the values inside of one table. In fact, we're going to use part of that today to fix all these multiple different country names. Okay, But then when it comes to updating it from the proper list of countries and setting the ID, we're going to do a multi-table update. So that's, that'll be new. And if you want to follow along with the bonus material today where I show you how to put that world flag in there, then go watch my images video first, okay? So watch these three videos right now. Pause and go watch those and then come back. I'll put links down below in the links section. You can click on them. Okay, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free download from my website. You can go grab a copy if you want. Again, links are down below. Watch the video on how I built this if you don't know how I did it and you're not familiar with it already. So the first thing we have to do is come into our customer table and scrub this and get it correct okay get it so that all the countries are the same now that's literally what I showed you how to do in the previous update query video okay we take New York New York New York all these misspellings of New York and fix it so they're all the same thing so do that first with your countries now I tell people leave your home country blank because that's probably where most of your customers are coming from so mine the United States is all blank Okay, and that's fine, but I want to change these all to be United States. And make sure all your other ones, like France, Germany, whatever, they're all spelled the same. So you got to scrub that field first before you can do what we're going to do. You just got to do it once. There's no way around it. Okay, you got to use manual update queries and fix the current list of all of your, your countries in your table. Uh, there's, there's no magic pill for that, okay? Unless you want to put all of the misspellings in your table that I'm going to show you how to do in a minute, which is kind of silly. So just scrub it once, and then it'll be good from that point on. So I'm going to make a quick update query to change all of the null values to United States. Okay, so create query design, bring in my customer table. 
All right, we're going to change this to an update query. This is what we did in the last video. Bring in country. All right, criteria is null. So where it's null, I want to set it to United States, like that. Okay, run the query. You might get the warning message. But now if I look in my customer table, I got United States. Okay, so this is good. Close that. Close. Save changes. No, we don't got to save that one. Okay, so we're good. So our, our customer data is all good. United States, United States, United States. And I got one from France. Okay. Now, for the purposes of class, let's change a couple of these. Just let's make this one here Canada, which is fitting because uh, Shatner, who just turned 90 today, by the way. Today's Bill Shatner's 90th birthday. Happy birthday, Bill. Uh, he's from Canada. And let's make this one Greece. Okay. All right. So now we got a couple of different countries in here. Okay. Now, we have to make a country table. So we can convert these over to IDs. All right, so let's make the country table first. Okay, so create table design, country ID, that's my auto number, the country name, or just country, that's fine. And then let's put in here flag. Now flag is going to be a file name to wherever your flag image is, and we'll talk about this at the end of the video. All right, so this is bonus material. So save this as my country table, country T, Make sure you got the R in there. I always type in county by accident. All right, it's country. Now, we're going to have to have a place to store that country ID in the customer table. So design the customer table. Come down here. Like, right near the country is fine. We can insert a row. Right click, insert row, and put in here country ID. That'll be a number of type long integer. It's a foreign key pointing to the primary key in the country table which is country ID there, okay? Save it, close it. Now, if you only had six records like me, you could just come in here and type in one, three, six, two, one, whatever these values happen to be, okay? Oh, one more thing. You might want to set the default value to be one, which will make United States or whatever your home country is. So let's do that real quick. All right, so country ID, I'm going to make this default value one, which I'm going to make United States in the table as soon as we put some data in it. All right. Now, like I was saying before, I so rudely interrupted myself. If you only got six records, no biggie. Just type them in, right? But let's pretend we got 60,000. I got 50,000 in my customer database. I wouldn't want to sit there and type those all in. So an update query will work just fine. But we're going to update from the other table. Okay. I want to pull in the ID for the appropriate country. Make sense? Okay. How do we do that? Well, first, let's throw some countries in our country table. All right, it's hard to do an update if you don't have any data in here. All right, so one I'm going to have be United States. We'll put the flags in in just a minute. All right, we'll do Canada. What else we got? Greece. We'll do uh, United Kingdom. And we'll do France. Okay, we'll just start with those five. Okay, close that. Save changes, sure. Okay, create, query design, bring in the customer table first, then bring in the country table. Now, access sees that you've got an auto number over here called country ID and an auto number over here called country ID as well, and it relates them. And that's normally what you want. But in this case, I don't want that. So delete that relationship. Click delete. What I want to do in this case is I want to relate the country text to the country text over here. So click and drag that. That forms a relationship based on the country text. Temporarily, right, we don't normally want to do that, but this is so I can relate those together and pull the ID over from this table to this one. All right, you follow me? So right now, if I brought in, let's say, first name, last name, country over here, country over there, you should see that they're matched up. All right, the relationship has been formed based on the country field. All right, we only want this for our update query though. So back in design view, what are we doing? Let's get rid of these fields here. Okay, let's change this over to an update query now. Now, what do I want to update? I want to update the country ID field and I want to set it to whatever this country ID field is right there. So down below here, we're going to set update to equals country T dot country ID. OK, 
Okay, see that? I'm going to update the country ID in the customer table to the related country ID in the country table. All right, makes sense? Now go ahead and run it. You only have to do this once. You'll get a warning message if you don't have warnings turned off. That's fine. Now I'm going to save this query. You won't need it again, okay? But I'm going to save it so when the gold members download the database, they've got it. Let's call this the country update query. All right, that way it's in your database for you. You can check it out if you need to. Close this. All right, let's check out our customer table now. Take a peek in here. Let's go make sure the country IDs have been updated. Yes, they have, right? United States is one, France is five, Greece is three, and so on. Okay, looks good. Now that we've got the country ID set, we no longer need this country text. So now we can go ahead and delete this from the customer table. So go back to design view, find the country text field, and go ahead and delete it. It'll say you permanently delete it. Are you sure? Make sure you got your backups first. Hold on, hold on. You gotta pull this slide out once in a while. All right, make sure you back up your data before you run any kind of update queries or delete any fields. All right, go watch my backup video. I just recently made a backup tech help, tech help video. Go watch that. I'll put a link down below. Very important stuff. Always, always, always back up your data. Okay, so I'm gonna delete this country table. Yep, okay, it's gone. So now all I have is the ID, but that's fine, that's all we need. All right, save it. All right, now let's go update our customer form. Notice we got pound name in there now. All right, because uh, this form is based on a field called country and X is like, I, don't, I, don't, I have no idea what this country field is. All right, so design view. Okay, we're gonna replace this with a combo box. Now, if you don't know how to do this, I got a video called relational combo boxes, how to make a combo box that's based on data from a different table. Go watch that video too. I guess I should have made that a prerequisite as well. Let me change the thing, hang on. Okay, there it is, relational combos. I'll put a link down below in the link section too. You can just click on that, unless of course you like typing, then go ahead and type it out. Okay, this one's real easy. Find the combo box right there. Drop it right there. All right, I want to find values from another table or query, all right, from the country table. Bring in the country ID and the country field. Don't need the flag field, leave that there. Next, sort it by country. Next, there's our list of countries. Add more if you'd like. Next, store that value in the country ID field. Remember, when you pick a value from a combo box, that first column is the ID. That's the one that actually gets stored in the country ID field in the customer table. All right, that's what's bound to this form. Next, what label do you want? Country. And we're done. And I'll slide it up and slide it over. And I'm going to format paint to get that thing. So I'm going to go to the format tab, format painter, and paint. There you go. And make that a little bit bigger. Okay. And we're going to adjust the tab order on the design tab, right? Tab order. I'll put, oh, it's combo 30. Let's fix that. I don't want Alex yelling at me. Oh, someone just beamed in. All right, let's fix this. There's so much to do. So many little details, right? Let's change combo 30. I don't like combo 30. All right, let's make this the country combo. You can make a country ID if you want to. I like to call my combo boxes combo. Okay, let's put that in the right spot in the tab order. Tab order. And let's take country combo and move it right after zip. All right, so slide it up. I cover this in my Access Beginner classes, by the way. So go watch those if you missed anything that I just did there and you didn't know what I just did, okay? All right, here we go. Save it, close it, open it up. There we go, United States. Drop it down, you can pick. Go to a different one, there's Canada. Okay, all right, Greece. Now, that's fixed. And if you change it in here, if I change this one here to Canada and close it, go back to my customer table, notice the ID is now two. All right, this table is now properly normalized as far as the country is concerned. All right, you can do the same thing with state if you want to. Usually I don't have a problem if it's, if state is just a US two digit state, I don't usually have a problem with that. But you can get the same problems with country that you can with state, and that's a whole different video, okay? <laughs> yes, you can make it so you can pick the country and then have the state based on the country using something called a cascading combo box. Yeah, I got a video on that too on cascading combo boxes. I'll put a link to that down below. That's actually one of my older videos. I'll probably update this sometime soon, but here I let you pick the state and then you get a list of cities from the state. Same thing, you could just add a third one if you want to put country in there too, okay? Now, are you ready for the bonus material? Ready to have some fun with flags, right? Put a little flag down there. 
I uh, I mentioned to Alex earlier today in chat that I was going to uh, to show this flag video, and uh, <laughs> he posted the Big Bang Theory fun with flags. One of my favorite shows, by the way. Okay, so I want to put a little picture of the flag down underneath here. Okay, we made a field in our country table to store the flag. So we're going to put the file names for our flags in here. How do we know what the file names are? Well, we need, we need to go grab some flags somewhere. Now, I've got them on my website. You can use the ones I've got if you want to. I grabbed them from somewhere else. I don't know where. But so close out of your database for a moment. First things first, here's my database, right? Here's the folder it's in. It's in my tech help folder on my desktop. Right, it's where I usually record my videos from. Let's make a flags folder inside of here. All right, right click, new folder. Let's just call this flags. So we're gonna put our flag images. All right, open that up. Now go somewhere on the web where you know you can get flags. If you want, you can go to the badges page on my website. Right, it's 599c.com slash badges. Yeah, I'll put a link to that down below too. You can steal my flags, I don't mind. All right, scroll down. I give my users different badges based on what they've uh, accomplished, right? Beginner, expert, developer, right? My memberships, insider circles, right? And here's all the members, gold, silver, platinum, all right? Anniversaries. I give people ranks, which is kind of cool. Captain, commander, all that stuff. Okay, I'm a, I'm a Trek nerd. But down here, there's the world flags. So if you're from a country, it'll show up there. If you want to grab these, be my guest. I grabbed them from somewhere else. I didn't make them myself. All right? So all you got to do is just click and drag. Boom, drop them there, right? UK, click, drag. Boom, drop it there. Canada and so on. Grab whatever flags you want. Okay. Now, these are the file names we're going to need. Okay. Norway. All right. To put in our database. Okay. I think I've got... Well, we're good. That's good for now. All right. Just grab the ones I've got in my database for now. You can grab all of them if you want to. Go get more if you want. I don't care. All right. It's your database. Do whatever you want with it. But, but notice what these file names are. Okay. Now, let's go back into our database. Open up your country table, put the flag names in here. Okay, now you don't got to put the whole thing, just a piece of it. What are you going to put in there? Just put the file name part. You don't need JPEG unless they're different. If they're all JPEGs, you can get away with this. Watch this. So United States is just US. Okay, Canada is Canada. Okay, do I have Greece in there? I don't think I have Greece in there. Sorry. I know I had it on my page. No, I didn't have it on my page. Sorry. Sorry, folks from Greece. Um, I, I picked these based on the countries that I have the most students from. I know I've got some students from Greece, but not a ton. So I'll, I'll add you guys soon, I promise. All right, but for now, I'm not going to do it for the class. But you get the point. Okay, so Greece is missing. And that's okay. All right, you might have some flags not in the system. It'll just, it just won't show anything. Okay, that's okay. All right, UK. Right there, UK. And then where's France? And did I put France in there? I don't think I put France in there. All right. All right. We don't have France either. Okay. So I got UK, Canada, US. That means I don't have a lot of students from France either. I know most people, you know, English speaking world. I know I don't speak French. I'm sorry. I, 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 I wanted to learn it, but I never got around to it. I took Latin in high school. All right. Let's put some more stuff in here though. Germany, just so we can pick from stuff. All right. Germany. And uh, it's not case sensitive, so it doesn't really care if you do all uppercase or lowercase. Okay. Australia. Australia. Okay, anyways, moving on. So we've got our flags that we have in our flag table here. Okay, in our country table, excuse me. All right, let me close this. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to make a country query that has the full path to that flag file name. All right, how do we do that? Well, let's go make a query. All right, create, query design, bring in the country query, just the country query, bring in the star, and right here, we're going to do flag full path, colon. What's that going to be equal to? Let me zoom in first so you can see this. Shift F2. Let me zoom in. Okay. All right. Go back to your Windows Explorer window here. All right. Here's your flags folder. Okay. Now, click in here. There's the full path to the flags folder. All right. So copy that. Control C. Copy that. Come in here. Put that inside of quotes. All right. There's the first part of it. All right, put a backslash on the end there. Okay, then we're going to concatenate, add on to that, the flag file name, which is flag, okay? So the flag field, whatever's in the flag field. And 
JPEG. All right, that's string concatenation. If you've never done string concatenation before, these little ampersand signs, go watch that video too. I guess there's even more prerequisites. I'm not putting it on the form though. All right, hit OK. Now let's save this. This will be my country queue, my country query that's got the flag names in it. Run it. And there you go. All right, there's all your flags. Oh, I'm missing some here. Okay, so that one's missing. Okay, so let's deal with that being uh, null and use an if function. Okay, let's come in here and we'll say right here if IIF, the immediate if function, if is null flag, glad, no, flag, right, comma, use that, otherwise an empty string. Let me zoom in again so you can see that better. Okay, there you go. If the immediate if function, and again, if you don't know what that is, I've got a video for it. Pause this, go watch that. Right? Is null says there's no value in flag. So if is null flag, then, oh, I got these backwards, don't I? Backwards, empty string, comma, that right there. Okay? So if flag is null, make this an empty string. Make it nothing. Otherwise, put the actual flag name in there. All right? That's the immediate if function. All right? Now we can run it. And now that'll be blank if there's no flag in the flag field. Okay. Now, since you watched my images video, you know that I can now use this to display that image on the customer's form. Okay. So let's link this flag full path field into the customer form somehow. How do we do that? Well, we do that with another query. Let's make a customer query. All right. So create query design. Bring in the customer table, which is what our form is currently based on. Now we're going to link to it that country queue that we made before. All right. Now, since that's a query, it doesn't always make that relationship. So you got to make the relationship country ID over here to country ID. All right. Now, double click on this guy and set it to number two. Include all records from customer T and only the records from country queue where the join fields are equal. In case you have a customer where you didn't pick a country for them, which shouldn't happen, but it's possible, all right? You should go back and make the country field required. Not a bad idea. The default is one, okay? But just in case you don't have the country in the list and you don't feel like adding it, blah, 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 that, that could happen, all right? That's called a left join. And again, I got videos on that if you want to watch what this is about. But now we can bring in the star from over here and the flag full path. Over here, that's the only one we need. Okay, we don't need the country text because it shows up in the combo box. We don't need the flag part of the file name, right? We just want the flag full path. Save this as customer queue or customer with flag queue if you want to. We don't have a customer queue yet. We got that customer LF queue, but we don't really use that much. That's for last name, first name. Okay, now run this and you'll see here's all your customers and their flags. All right, now I can use this in the form to display that picture. So go to the customer form. Now that I've got all the work done, it's easy to do now, right? Design view. Open this up. Find the picture control right there. This guy. Image control, sorry. Image. Put the flag. Size it for the flag, right? Right about there. Cancel this. Now open up the properties for the flag. All right. The control source is going to be, oh, I didn't change, I didn't rebind the form, right? That's okay. Good thing I'm, I missed a step. That's fine. I, I'm going to, I'm going to leave this in the video to show you that I do things like this too. All right. I'm like, where is that flag? Okay. Well, I got to change where this form gets its data from, right? The record source for the form. Drop this down, pick customer Q now. All right. Now this form will get its values from that query, which is fine. All right, now I can go in here and change the control source to flag full path. And also don't forget to copy and paste and change the name. So it's not image 32. Okay, now since this is bound to that field, the flag should show up there automatically. Save it, close it, open it back up again, and there's your flag. You can make it as big or as small as you want. All right, go to the next one, go to the next one. There's Canada. All right, and if you change somebody, Changes to Germany, it updates automatically. No programming involved. 
I haven't done a shred of VBA yet. All right, I try to keep VBA for the extended cut videos anyways. I try to keep these basic. Okay, but the query puts together the file name, like you just saw a second ago, and the file name is what's bound to this picture control. So as you change it, it just automatically updates. Right, what else we got in there? UK, boom. See that? Actually, Jim Kirk should be Canadian. There we go. Okay, and I'm going to go back to the US. Perfect. So there you go. There's your fun with flags. Now, want to see something cool? This is what I do with the members. You ready? Look at that. Pop-up window. Pick what you want. Click. Updates back here. Isn't that neat? Look at that. Uh-huh. Hey, yeah, you like that? All right. I got into a discussion with Alex. Um, I've seen some websites, for example, where you can click on this and you can have a combo box that has the little flag in it right next to the name. So you could pick it and it updates automatically. Now, unfortunately, there's no way in access to do that with the built-in native combo box control. It's just, it's not possible. Yes, I've seen some third-party ActiveX controls that you can get to plug into access to do that. But I, if you've watched any of my other videos or courses, you know I hate external components with a passion. I've seen them cause all kinds of problems with access. I like to keep my design to just what's built into access with very few exceptions. But the good news is I can replicate pretty much everything you need with the native controls. Okay, so here's the normal combo box, but I change it so you can click on this. It pops up a window, another form, where you can see the list of all the countries and the flags right here. Pick one of them. And it updates right back here, just like you would if this was just a normal combo box. So I will show you how to do that in the extended cut for members. There you go. Multi-table update queries in the extended cut. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. Gold members can download the templates that I create for the Tech Help videos. 34 minutes long. This one, I've got over 100 extended cut videos available. So there's plenty for you to watch if you sign up and become a member. In this particular one, I'll show you how to make that country pop up. And I'll show you how to return the value that's selected to whatever form calls it. So you can call that from multiple forms, the customer form, the customer contact form, or whatever. And that little pop-up form will return the value to the appropriate form. We'll cover that in the extended cut. How do you become a member? Click the Join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different types of membership levels that are available. Silver members and up will get access to all of the extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and more. Gold members get access to a download folder containing all the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus access to my full beginner courses and some of my expert courses. These are the full-length courses found on my website and not just for access. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, ASP, and lots more. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to post any comments that you have. I do read them all. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Click on the Show More link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of building databases with Access. It's over three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like level one, level two is just $1. And it's also free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and you can send me your question there. Click here to watch my free access beginner level one course, more of my tech help videos, or to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video from AccessLearningZone.com.